Hello, I just wanted to give a big shout out to our seven new group members and I really felt like um, I should I should do a live video for this one because we've got some great feedback. We've got a lot of new group members coming in and I felt like I wanted to just jump in and tell you what some of our new group members are struggling with and some of the things that they said they'd like to learn about. So some of our new group members mentioned that they're struggling with a lack of networking in their community, um, a lack of education for art therapists specifically, um, finding their niche, and also finding their niche. Uh, FaceTime is telling me to do something here. <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Okay. <laughs> Um, also feeling confident in your niche and what it is that you want to do, feeling confident in your own gifts, right? And how to do good business. Um, also wanting some advice on how to get things started. Um, how to wanting a step-by-step -step system for how to start things. Also how to develop your special talents and get them online and make some passive income how to get how to gain more clients how to maintain positive energy and achieve a level of success so these are all really fantastic um, things that you want to learn about and absolutely I want to address some of these so I am planning to do another live webinar and it would be super helpful if and the vote seems to be that they want the webinar to be you want the webinar to be on um, how to diversify your business, how to hone in on what your special skills and talents are and bring them online and then market them. And so this is what I teach you the nuts and bolts of this in my program, uh, The Abundant Healer, 90 Days to Skyrocket Your Career. Um, and there are still spots left open in the current cycle for that. But I'm going to be doing a free webinar just to um, talk about that and address some of the concerns that have been expressed in this group as well as things that I've heard through my email list and, and other forums. So uh, what would be helpful to me is if you could comment um, below this video, whether you're watching it live or as a replay, and just let me know like what you think your special talent, skill set, knowledge base is, right? Maybe it's that you like a particular style of painting, or maybe it's that, um, you have a certain kind of uh, knowledge area that you're very uh, um, well versed in. I'm, a, I'm an attachment person. I know a lot about attachment theory. So I've developed a lot of courses around attachment in art therapy and mindfulness. And actually, see if I can show you. Today I was doing a demonstration filming. This is my, this is my apartment. Actually, you can kind of see my apartment. This is, this is the corner that is my studio. Um, and today I was filming for another course that I'm building um, using singing bowls and chakra stones. You can see them right there. And, um, and also the pendulum. So just to use my own example, um, incorporating mindfulness and sound healing and, and some um, energy healing work is something, is like a niche is a thing that I like to do. And so I'm creating courses around that. That's one. Um, I also create courses around my knowledge of attachment and creative arts therapies. I do recommend if you're starting out to stick to one, like pick one thing and that's your baby and that's your signature course. Okay. Um, so what I want to do is I want to find out like, what's your thing? Like, what do you do? And, and what I would like to do is include that in the webinar that I'm going to develop. So if you can tell me, I can prepare some advice for you. <laughs> and the idea is I would like it to be very interactive. I want it to be a presentation where you're telling me that you're getting ideas and you're sharing your ideas with me, and then I am sort of bouncing it back off of you and giving you some ideas on how to make that come together. Um, so please let me know in the comments what, what, kind, what, what skill set, what area, what knowledge area you have that brings you joy that you think is really a reflection of your soul purpose. And I'm going to try to facilitate for that, that for you on the live webinar. So the other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, mindset. 
because I think a lot of times we, you know, before we can get to the sales funnels, before I can start talking to you about how to build an online presence, before I can talk to you about how are you going to diversify your sole purpose and, and have it start to develop passive income for you. Um, and I don't mind sharing that this month I, I hit my highest income point yet with respect to um, online revenue. I made $7,700. Uh, this month, thank you, Ariel. <laughs> um, Seven thousand six hundred sixty something dollars this month, and that was that's the most I've ever brought in before, and that was really satisfying. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> and basically, what I want to do is I want to, uh, through my Abundant Healer program, and show you guys how to do it too. Um, but again, you're never gonna be able to do that if you don't have the mindset. If your mind isn't in the right place, um, and and I believe thoroughly believe that mind and body are connected. So in in the program that I do and that I'm offering, we spend the first the whole first month working on mindset and and clearing your energy, clearing your body because this is the thing: the body is the first organizer of experience, and money is nothing but energy. If you that's the first thing you have to learn. Money is energy okay and a lot of times we come at this with scarcity attitudes and we think money is some universe we think of money as like a universal law we think of money as like this hard and fast thing that exists outside of us that there are laws that exist outside of us that make up the rules about how and where and when you make money and the thing is is that no such thing exists we make up the rules we do and so I mean I say this a lot but I'm gonna say it again Money's like manure. You let it pile up and it starts, you know, it starts to stink, but you spread that shit around and it starts to grow. <laughs> and it's very true. So when you think about money, you want to think about what is the meaning of it for you? Because a lot of people say, I'll say, okay, what's your vision? What's your vision for your abundance? What's your, why do you want to make, why do you want to make passive income? Why do you want to make more money? Well, I just want to be able to afford my bills. Well, I just want to be able to pay off my debt, right? That's a scarcity attitude because you're still operating from a place of lack, right? You're thinking of yourself as indebted. So what happens is you start imagining piles of money in the bank. Then I'll feel safe. Then I'll feel secure, right? Then I won't be afraid anymore. And so you're looking for money to fill you up and to make you feel unafraid. And so what happens is, is your attention in that moment is focused on fear. And so what happens is you start drawing in more situations that perpetuate that fear. And so if you could imagine... If you can imagine, a pile of money is just an inverted pit, <laughs> right? It's a pile, but turn that pile around, and it's really just an empty pit. So that's it's the same thing, okay? So how do you change your mindset? Well, first you have to realize that money is just a thought form. And how do we realize that? Well, everything is made up of atoms, and atoms are nothing but moving particles, and they are moving particles that spin around 99.9% .9 empty space. And the one little piece of an atom that we think we think we can pinpoint is actually a particle that blips in and out of existence and we have no idea where it goes. We don't, we have no idea where it goes. So what, what we have found and what scientists have found, what research has found and physicists have found is that particles react to intention to being paid attention to, that they seem to know when they're being observed. And we are all made up of this stuff. You are made up of the same stuff as the table, right? When it comes down to it on a subatomic level, we are all the same stuff. So you have to start thinking of money that way, okay? So in my program, I teach you all of this in the first month. Now, if we are, I recently saw Dan Siegel, he's a, an interpersonal neurobiologist, and he said that you know, over the centuries of study and everything else, no one has been able to come up with a definition of the mind, okay? And so Dan Siegel said that he'd been in, he's um, had been in conversations with mathematicians, and mathematicians seem to have come up with a definition of the mind, and it is that the mind is nothing but information and energy flow, and neither the skin nor the skull is an obstruction for that flow, which is within and without. So that's, to my mind, just a fancy word of saying, well, the mind is just a form of energy and the body is just a more dense form of mind. 
So the body is just a more dense form of mind. Which means that if our physical bodies are not actually a quote-unquote universal truth, it's just a dense form of energy, so is money. And if we can control the way that our bodies behave and respond and experience things in response to our stressors, in response to what we're thinking, right? And this is old news. This is Mindfulness 101, right? That when you have a negative thought, you can start to feel stress in your body. When you feel stress in your body, suddenly you're thinking negatively. Okay, so there is that inner relationship. That's not new. But if we break it down even further and we say that, well, it's just concentrated energy, so is everything. So is everything. So if the body is the first organizer of experience, it is also the most practical apparatus of our mind, of the organization for our mind and our energetic intention. So is money. So is money. And maybe I'm asking you to believe in magic. Maybe it feels like I'm asking you to believe in magic. Maybe I am. Depends on where you're coming from. But you have to shift your mindset that way. And then you believe it or not, you start make more of it. <laughs> you do. So maybe I, it's better to tell this in, in a parable. So a lot of people, they, they know how to write affirmations. Okay. They know how to say, okay, well, I'm going to write an affirmation and I'm going to tell myself this positive thing and eventually the positive thing is going to come true. But what happens is in the back of their mind, right, they say, I want this, I want that, or I am this, I am that. And then there's a little voice that says, no, you're not. Who are you kidding? And so what happens is that creates doubt and that creates um, contrast, a dissonance within yourself. So there's some ways around that on a practical level. Like you can say, for example, let's say um, you want to make more money. So rather than attending to how much you want more of what you don't have, you say, I love the feeling of putting a check in the bank. That's true. So there's no dissonance there. And what you're doing in that moment is you're focusing on the feeling of putting money in the bank. So that's actually going to draw more money to you. Okay rather than focusing on how little the check is or how much more you wish you could have in the bank. So that's just like a little itty bitty example. Now, the other aspect of this is we have a tendency to, this is kind of third eye stuff, we have a tendency to um, have a preconceived notion of what abundance looks like, right? So money's one form of abundance and we can work on manifesting a specific form that we want. But the trick is that it's possible that those avenues through which it may come to you may not look the way you anticipate. And so part of, of putting this kind of magic to work for you is being able to see the opportunities that are being presented to you even if they don't fit what you thought they would look like. Okay? So if I'm, I'm gonna give you an example, a very basic example. So let's say, um, let's say my vision of abundance, I'll say, uh, if it is for, you know, the greatest good of all in alignment with my highest purpose, I would like to manifest a shiny red car and I would like to lose 20 pounds before my high school reunion in two months. Okay, so that's our manifesting intention. Okay, so now let's say a week later, your cousin shows up at your door and he has a shiny red bike. And he says, look, I bought this bike for my nephew, doesn't fit him, lost the receipt, I can't take it back, do you want it? And you look at the bike and you're like, what am I going to do with a bike? Like, it's definitely not the shiny red car that you wanted. And it's not a diet pill that you wish would go on sale on Amazon. But what if you had a shiny red car and that meant that you were in traffic and late to work every day? What if the prices of gas go up and suddenly you can't afford the shiny red car? What if your insurance rates go up? Now you have to work extra hours to pay for the shiny red car. What if the fumes from the gas ruin the environment? What if now because you're not walking to the bus or you're not walking halfway to work every day, you're gaining weight? So it's actually impeding the achievement of your second affirmation, your second abundance goal, right? But the bike, the bike, you can ride in the bike lane and we all know nobody really rides in the bike lane. <laughs> you're not stuck in traffic, right? You're not... Um, polluting the earth so you're reducing your carbon footprint and you're also losing weight because you are burning calories at a much higher rate than you were before 
So not only is it actually the best solution for you, but it is also in service of all, right? It's for the highest good of all. So that's an abundance that you manifested, and in this example, in a week's time. But only if you can see it, right? Now, the, the same thing works. The same thing works when it comes to what it is that I want to teach you in my program, which is the Abundant Healer, 90 Days to Skyrocket Your Career. Here's my pitch. <laughs> and basically, it's, it's a, a bunch of stuff. The first month, we work on mindset. I talk much more about these ideas, show you how to do it. And then in the second two months, we move into the realm of the online stratosphere. So I give you a crash course in marketing. I give you a crash course in sales funnels, in how to conceptualize, develop your product. Um, I walk you through it hand in hand. You have six coaching calls with me, 12 group coaching calls with everybody else in the program. Um, Facebook ad training, Facebook group training, Facebook page training, YouTube 101, shoestring uh, budget videos. Um, how to build your own YouTube channel, how to price yourself, how to package yourself, how to reach foreign markets, okay? So, you know, part of it too with the mindset thing is we sort of step into this realm of um, being a therapist and being a healer and there's a pretty ingrained model of working one-to-one. -one. You know, and a lot of us enjoy that. A lot of us like the human contact, and I would never in a million years say don't have that. But I would ask you to just imagine for a moment that, um, or maybe just to realize that if your vision of a successful career or practice is to have 40 hours a week where you're just seeing one-to-ones, you're going to cap out because you can only ever see so many people in a week and ultimately, you will only ever be able to charge so much for that. So you will cap out at some point. And I guess what I want you to realize is that you don't have to. That you can take what are your talents, and if you are an artist or a creative arts therapist and healer, you probably have some pretty unique talents, right? And you almost have an advantage because not only do you have a unique knowledge base, but you also probably have some form of skill and creativity that is very marketable. And you can take that and you can scale it. You can scale it from you to the many, not necessarily just you to one. And the thing is when you can scale it and you can bring it to a lot of people, that is what ultimately brings in the revenue, okay? And I guess I appeal to this audience because one thing I've noticed in over a decade of working with art therapists and creative arts therapists and healers is that they're usually not one trick ponies. <laughs> they usually have like a gazillion things going on and, and their fingers are in so many different pies. And I think that sometimes that's perceived as like a lack of focus or an inability to really follow through on something. And I, I just don't believe that. I think it's actually a strength and I think that it's just that prior to this amazing era in which we live, there hasn't been a really um, useful and conducive outlet for it, especially one that can bring you financial stability and independence. So I would like to say that if you are interested in talking to me and um, finding out a little bit more about the program that I'm talking about and that I'm offering and, and how it might help you specifically in your business, that you can give me a call. I do free consultations. 30-minute uh, consultations we can talk about your business and and you know where you want to go with that and I can try to give you a bird's-eye view of it um, the other piece of it is that if you have a talent or a skill or a hobby or a knowledge base that that you just find yourself coming back to but you're just not sure that it could be sellable or how would you package that please let me know in the comments below what that is because I am I within the next week or so I want to do another webinar where we really uh, come together and we look at this and we go through how that could happen. And, you know, for, for more than one person because we learn from each other. We learn from each other's processes. You know, and one of the things that came up in one of the uh, members that I just uh, brought into the group was this notion of competition. 
And I think that also goes back to scarcity attitudes. You know, that um, sometimes we don't talk about how much we charge or we don't talk about uh, certain things or pool our resources because we're afraid that uh, people are going to compete with us because, you know, we're, we are, um, what's the, you know, uh, competing for the same audience, right? And the thing is, that's a, that's a scarcity attitude as well. That there there is, in fact, plenty to go around there's plenty to go around and especially if you stop thinking outside the box and you stop thinking um, inside your country <laughs> you stop thinking just within your own zip code like we're living in a global society global society so we need to take advantage of that you know like I've told this story before, but on my YouTube channel, I just originally started throwing up videos because I didn't want my computer to crash and I didn't want them to lose them, but I knew nothing about YouTube at the time. I didn't know you could privatize stuff. I couldn't know, I didn't know you could make things unlisted. And then um, I just left it there. And six months later, I had like 1,000 subscribers. And I was like, what? Like people were watching my stuff and they were listening to it and they were asking me questions. And you know what? They started contacting me for a consultation. At the time, I had no sales funnel. I had, I had not even posted any links on how anyone could find me or contact me. They went and like Google searched me <laughs> to find me and to find a way to contact me. I was getting contacts to like emails. I was like, how the hell did you get my email? Just to talk about this. And you know, I've had consultations with people in the Netherlands, in Portugal, in um, UK, in Canada, okay? So I guess the reason I'm doing this video and I'm, I'm just kind of um, maybe riffing a little bit here is I want you to start thinking outside the box. And I want you to start considering yourself a real business person that is in charge of your financial future. You're not beholden, okay? And the great thing about being able to really diversify your business and put yourself out there and, and be able to make money online is that, let's say you don't wanna charge so much for your individual sessions, or let's say you wanna work with an uh, underprivileged population, or, you know, I usually encourage people to charge their worth and I mean, I've shared this before and I'll share it again. I charge about 200, 200, sometimes 250 for one hour with me. Now, but I, I cannot say I always do. Sometimes I do reduce the fee because I meet someone and there's something about them that I feel like there's a different kind of exchange, right? That there's a benefit in the exchange that maybe it's not in the form of money, but it might be in something else. And so I think we have to, you know, keep our minds and our hearts open to that. It's much easier to do that if you are not financially reliant on the fees you're charging your clients, right? So if you're not, if you're not, um, if, if you're not struggling because you just feel bad and you just can't charge your clients that much, if you don't have to worry about that, it changes the dynamic of, of your inner space and it also changes the quality of what you're able to provide in a very real way. Does that make sense? So um, basically I just, I just want to encourage you to think about where your creativity lies, right? What brings you joy? What makes you, um, what relaxes you, right? Or you might even think about what do you do when you're mad? What do you do when you're mad? Because I guarantee you, whatever you do, whatever your talent, your skill, your special thing is, it's going to solve a problem for somebody else, even if you can't see it. Um, I, I guarantee you it will. And so I would really, I really want to invite you to let me know what that thing is. And maybe you don't know in this moment, but I would like you to think about what that thing may be and to leave it in the comments below because that's... I want to take that and I want to help um, put it in a framework for you so that you can start to shift your scarcity mindset. So you can start to think about money as a thought form instead of money as an absolute truth.
right? Because that's what's going to ultimately allow you to step into your authority. And that is what really allows you a, a measure of freedom, financial freedom, financial independence, um, you know, and that bleeds into everything else, your sense of self, of self and your sense of security, things like that. So again, if you would like to talk to me one-to-one, -one, have a nice, let's have a 30-minute chat about your business, about how I can help you with that, let me know. I'm going to put a, I'll put a link in the comments here um, for where you can sign up for a consultation or you can also just private message me um, here in this group. And also let me know what your special talent, skill, knowledge, area, hobby is in the comments. And I'm going to be putting together a really amazing webinar. It's going to be very interactive. It's going to be like, it's going to be like a coaching session for you guys. So let me know what that is. And we'll put that together and I will let you know when that webinar is going to happen. It will be in this month. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching. We've got Char and Casey. Thank you guys. And Ariel. You guys are amazing. Thank you for watching. Have a great Saturday evening.